right, so everybody knows Queen, right? One of the most popular and influential rock bands of all time. Huh, Brian May, Roger Taylor, Freddie Mercury. They formed the group in London in 1970. Uh, smart guys, too. How smart? Brian May has a PhD. Initially, Queen was dismissed by music critics, especially in the United States. But it wasn't long before frontman Freddie Mercury launched them into stardom. With that unique voice and legendary live shows, Queen became one of the best-selling groups of all time. Uh, their albums have spent more than 1,400 weeks. That is 27 years on the UK charts. Uh, that's more than Beatles. By the early 90s, Queen drastically scaled back their activity, and rumors began to circulate about Freddie Mercury's health. November 24th, 1991, Freddie Mercury died from complications from AIDS, but his death didn't hurt the band's popularity. Overall, they released over 20 albums and had 18 number one hits. 18 number one! And in 2001, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, Brian May and Roger Taylor are planning to release a brand new Queen record, but this time it'll be Paul Rogers on vocals. Now, they've also created a stage musical, kind of a comedy, called We Will Rock You. It debuts in Canada in March. Well, here we go. One of the most successful bands in the world ever. Queen. Roger and Brian. How are you, gentlemen? So you're doing the Queen, We Will Rock You. You're doing it here now. Talk about it. Yeah, it's a new version, an all-Canadian version, which is very exciting. We've got a very young cast and a very young band, as a matter of fact. We've been running in London for nearly five years now, so uh, mm -hmm. time it came to Canada. And, and so initially people would think, listen, uh, a musical by a band, okay, is this going to turn into some weirdo self-indulgent story of my life story? <laughs> but it's not that. It's actually not very self-indulgent. It, it takes the, um, the mickey out of a lot of people in showbiz, including us, which I think is rather nice, so it's kind of impartial in that sense. And it's not a story about a band, it's a story about kids in the future who, who live in a world that's been so completely mashed by the media that they're not able to, to have their own individual thoughts and make their own individual music. So it's about their struggle to, to find individuality and make music. The whole cast is Canadian, the whole band is Canadian. And, um, you pick people from all over the country, right? Isn't it pretty spread From out? east yeah. to west in Canada, yeah. The whole place was trawled and we found some fantastic talent, just fantastic. How do you get to this point? How do you, how do you it, it, when, like, who comes up with the idea to have, have a musical like this and to tell this story? Yeah, I mean, musicals are not something that I personally like at all. Normally, um, it's not my my kind of... You're not singing My Fair Lady, you're not doing Pygmalion. I mean, I'm at really home. not thinking about it. It's, it's so far away from that, you, 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 you know, I can't tell you how far. It's not funny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just not funny and it doesn't rock. Um, yeah, it, it's a di strange situation for us, but we try to make to break a lot of rules with it and to make it a true rock and roll. Musical. Think of the evolution of your band when you started making records and touring and doing what you did, uh, and then and then now you're touring. You did the Paul Rogers tour, and then there's this musical. Could you have ever foreseen a time when this would have been what Queen is? How you, what this has become? Not really. I mean, it's difficult to say what Queen is. It's really us two, you know. Um, uh, unfortunately, the but uh, yeah. uh, yeah. circumstances have made it that way. Um, but you know, we're very proud of still you know, flying under that banner. There is a vibe, you know, mm. since there is a spirit of Queen which somehow we feel locked into. And the great thing about the musical is it's not just some fossilized thing like a representation of us, it's something which lives in a new generation of, of artists. That's kind of what it's like when, when Queen tours now. You have to, you're picking a band. Yeah, we, I guess we do, yeah. We've been touring with the same guys yeah. for a while and uh, they're, they're great, they're friends and... But you said the, the process of, of putting other guys together who you knew you had to go on stage with and do these songs of the audience. Was that work? Was that hard to do? Actually, it was hard, mm. yeah. I mean, Roger and I often would talk about it, you know, should we do this, should we get someone to sing? And generally, I was very much against it. I mean, Roger needed the money, but... Um, 
<laughs> but I was like, you know, I, I was like, why would we want to replace Freddie? Why would we want to do this? The, fun, the, the amazing thing happened that we met Paul Rogers. I just happened to be on a show uh, concurrently with him, and we did All Right Now together. And there was such an immediate chemistry there. To cut a long story short, I rang Roger and said, look, we never thought of this. How about with Paul Rogers? Paul Rogers is not like Freddie. He, he actually was the hero of Freddie, which is great. Mm -hmm. But um, he's so different in style. The whole oeuvre, the whole Queen ensemble takes a different life now. So he's, he's a great collaborator. What was that phone call like on your end? Um, I mean, to, to me it worked, because we, we, we all love Paul. Um, but he was so from left field, because he's just, he was just so unlike Freddie in so many ways. Mm -hmm. He really comes from the blues and from soul. And Freddie comes from Neptune, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he, he's a lot more down to earth, but in a strange way he fitted in beautifully. Probably from Mercury. Yeah, oh, maybe Mercury. Yeah. Right <laughs> there were people out there who didn't want us to do it. You know, I, I, I do a lot of email stuff. I have a website stuff, and and people wrote and said, "Oh, you, how could you possibly do it without Freddie?" And I went, "Well, you know, you'd rather be that we were dead. You know, if, if we're alive, we're going to play. We're musicians. That's yeah. what we do." We'll get into that a little bit more. Queen, when the hour returns. here on the hour, Brian, Roger, the guys in Queen, they have the musical going on, but there's a lot more going on with these guys as well. Um, you, uh, the interesting thing about the Queen concert when I saw you play was, uh, was the part where you let Freddie Mercury sing. Ah, uh, yeah. On tape. And, <laughs> and very important. It, it is, and it seemed yeah. very intentional. And it, it had to be there. And everybody wondered, how is this going to happen? Yeah. Tell us what. I, I think we didn't really think that it would work with anybody else singing Bohemian Rhapsody. So we, uh, through the trickery. Um, yeah, it was a nice thing to do. It, it's, it's a good moment. Uh, it was a good moment every night. So the yeah. band plays, and as the band is playing, uh, the vocals come in, there's this big video screen, and it's Freddie Mercury singing. And yeah. it was it's Freddie playing piano, too. And the strange thing is it felt like he was there. Yeah. If I didn't look up, I could hear Roger playing to the Yeah, I closed my eyes every night. Yeah, it just, and it's, it just, was just felt like, like he was over there, you know. Well, and yeah. it, I can't begin to imagine the, the sort of surreal feeling it must be for you, because we all only know about the story of Queen and Freddie Mercury through what we saw in the papers and what we see live in, in the history of your band, but that's your friend, that's your life, that's your band. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we just passed the 15 year anniversary. It's been, this is a... I can't believe it is 15 years. It's an, he's sort of part of our mental wallpaper, really. And, yeah. and he's, we, I think we still both think about him on a daily basis, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's forever yes. with us in the music and, you know, we had a whole life together, so. Yeah, you know. it's like a family member, really. That's the way it feels. Feels good, strangely enough. You know, you, to a certain extent, you, I mean, you don't get over it. It never becomes nice. But you get to a point where you realize the joy of it. You realize the fantastic times that we had and what he's left us and, and what we still share, in a sense. So we, we feel good about what we bring to the public of Freddie still. Well, Freddie's death, the uh, tribute memorial concert you guys did, the huge one, uh, raised a lot of attention, a lot of awareness to, to AIDS issues, HIV AIDS issues. You still are involved with that, right? Very much so, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we run this charity called the Mercury Phoenix Trust, mm -hmm. which continues to generate uh, you know, quite a lot of money towards AIDS help, mainly help and, and research. How has it changed for you uh, dealing with the subject 15 years into it? Because it was still, very early in those early days. It was. It still needs saying that. People tend to think, that, oh, it's done, you know, it's dealt with. But it's not. It's still there. It's still rampant. And, um, yeah, we think it's still worth kind of banging the fist about. Yeah, I mean, the fact that the people can actually exist with it now, you know, with, with the um, drugs now. Um, but it's still such a, it's really, you've got to get, get people before that. You know. mm. And it's not just in Africa, it is here, you know, and yeah. it can be one encounter which can give it to you. So you've got to think about that. Mm. Absolutely. You guys are the kind of guys that look back on your career. Um, do you look back and you go over it with a fine tooth comb? Do you think about things you've done? Do you, are you those kinds of people? I try not to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, do, you have, do you have regrets? I know this, there's a great line, regrets yeah, I had yeah. a few, but do you, do you look back at the things you've done and say, you know, I wish that wasn't in the books? or? No, I think we maybe a couple of things. <laughs> well, you know, but, uh, this, this, but mainly, yeah, mainly, the funny thing is you look back with a forgiving eye sometimes, because I look back on me and I think, God, I was a kid, you know, and, and I can forgive myself making those kind of errors. Well, I mean, the Sun City Apartheid thing was big in Canada at the time, and you guys took a lot of heat for that, for we playing. A lot of heat for that, uh, yeah. yeah, we, did, yeah. We, were, we were well intentioned, but uh, yeah, maybe we, slightly naive. 
Mm -hmm. We acted according to our own consciences, and I think yeah. we did some good by being down there. I mean, that's another subject, but I would, I would defend that to the death. And um, recently, we've done a lot of stuff with Nelson Mandela, and he certainly didn't have a problem with us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, yeah. if people still do, fine. <laughs> you know, we, we always act. You can only act according to your own conscience. You work things out as best as you can. As you can. And, um, yeah, Nelson didn't mind, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that we played to non-segregated audience at that time was quite a coup, actually. But people tend to forget that. When, when you look at today, uh, there are so many artists who are very politically charged and, and do, you know, get involved. Do you, do you look back with the benefit of experience and say, careful how you handle yourself? I think it's up to the individual artist to, to say that. I know Freddie was always completely against uh, politicizing. You know, he used, to, he used to say we are entertainers and it's all disposable. Mm. And that's a good uh, viewpoint, really. I mean, it's in a sense. It is. I wouldn't go that far, actually. I don't, mm. I don't think it is disposable. You know, it's, it's mm. lasted. But um, it, it is a good viewpoint, though, in some ways. Yeah, yeah, music is what we're about. You know, and the fact that we can take it all over the world, regardless of race, colour or creed, something that we're very proud of. But I, I, Roger and I both find as we get older, we get drawn more into the political side. You, know, you have to. You start to feel things and you have to make a point. You feel some responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're becoming slightly more political, in, mm -hmm. even in our music, probably. The story's kicking around that you might do a new record. Is that for real? We yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've started a record, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we went in the studio, just Roger and me and Paul Rogers, actually, mm -hmm. to begin with, just to test the water, see what happens, because we've already tested it pretty good on stage, and that works great. But to go in the studio, and we went in almost unprepared as well, deliberately, just mm -hmm. bounced ideas off each other, and came up with some tracks, which I think are really great. They're very different, they're very uh, unlike anything that we've done or anything that Paul's done, actually, quite yeah, fresh. it's quite spectacularly, went spectacularly well, yeah. really, you know. Is it like riding a bicycle, you just get back on? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Sort in a sense. Of. Yeah, <laughs> it's a different bike, though. You know, yeah. you have a yeah. different saddle height, and you know, it gets a little wobbly at yeah, first. Just no. change bikes occasionally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and you know, the thing is too, and I guess as, as the audience expectations is when, when, when Freddie died, they just expected you guys wouldn't make music anymore. They just figured that that was the end of Queen. Yeah, mm. well, so did we. You yes, know, we in, did. In a way, but it just wouldn't die. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't lay true. down. Yeah, there's something which we did work all our lives, all our young lives, to put together. And it is something precious, and there is a precious legacy out there which we've come to realise. Um, it was good for us to take a break, I think. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we never stopped making music, but we stopped m making music together for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think we came back with a real good perspective and an understanding of where we fit into the growth of rock music in recent times. And, you know, mm -hmm. a certain humility and a certain... Um, enthusiasm for what we had, what we shared. Did that change the way you guys related to each other? The experience? I don't know, you know, we've so many ups and downs over so, so many years. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 I think it was Brian and I sort of have a sort of mutual respect that we probably didn't always have, you know. Um, it's true. Um, Roger, in, in the fights in the band, it was normally Roger and I who were opposite, opposite ends. Everyone thinks that Freddie was difficult. Actually, Freddie was great. He was, he was a great diplomat. Yeah. 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 Generally, Roger and I were at opposite ends of some kind of stick, some kind of <laughs> bone of contention. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think we do have more understanding of, of each other now, Roger and I. We, we know that we disagree in certain areas, but we have a respect. There's also more space. There's only two of us, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you still have the great Queen song in your head, something that hasn't been recorded yet? Oh, I think we have some great new material. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really do, actually. It's been a long time, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. That's going to be good, because next time we go out, we won't just be nostalgic. We will be, this is what we are now. I was going to ask you, because radio has changed so much. I've talked to David Bowie and guys like that and Alice Cooper, and big legend who can't get new songs on the radio anymore. Yeah. Tom Petty. These guys have trouble yeah. getting new songs on the radio. Yeah. So for you, people have you come in, interview you, love to have Queen. But will they play your new songs? They'll probably play Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I yeah. don't know. We, we, we get played a lot in England because I live there. I know that. But, um, but strangely enough, I don't hear the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. And I wonder why. Because they did make some good records, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the radio seemed to put That's themselves true. in Radio's a box. You know? Of course, that may change too. See, our musical's going to change that. Your music will do it. It's going to change the world, yeah. Perfect way. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Great. Roger Bryan. Thank you. The hour will continue after this. All right, coming up next week, Amy Lee of Evanescence is here. We'll also take Ron McLean to the newsstand, and we'll hook up with Andy Summers, formerly of the...